Okay, so we're now in 3D. We're looking at moments in 3D, three dimensions. And the way that we compute them is to use the cross product. Okay, so this is not a maths course. So please make sure that you, you study the cross product. But we'll look at the basic idea. <clears throat> the way that we determine this R cross F. Remember, R and F are in IJK form. So R could be something like whatever, 2i minus 3j plus 4k, right? Something like that. And it's in meters, remember? So, th and then F uh, as well, it could be, it's also given in IJK, IJK form. And the way that we do it is we calculate something called the determinant. Whoops, anyway, the determinant. So this is how we do it. We write I. So we're calculating the moment, right? Using the cross product. We write, draw two lines. You don't have to draw the lines. But you write I, J, K. And then the first row, sorry, that's the first row, I, J, K. The second row are the scalar components of your position vector. So you would put in, you would put in there 2, minus 3, and 4, for example. And you'd have I, J, K. And then whatever your F would be. So it would be 20 I plus 20 J minus 20 K, for example. Newton. You'd have 20, 20 minus 20. Because you would write out these scalar components. And then, um, like I said, this is not a maths course. So I'm not going to teach the in-depth understanding of why this happens but what we do is you start off by taking that uh, i unit vector putting it there we're going to look at we're going to look at what's happening in the x direction and what you do is you cross this column out and cross it out and you cross out that row and you're left with these four quantities r y r z f y f z and you do this kind of thing. You go like this. You go like that. All right? What is it? What am I saying? Saying you multiply this by that. So R Y F Z. And you minus that times that. You minus R Z times F Y. Okay, so you go like this. Shoop. That times that minus that times that. And this is what we get. And this is our moment. We'll look at this now in a minute. In the x about the x-axis. Remember, whenever we talk about moments, we're talking about something rotating about some axis where your thumb points in the positive direction and your and um, your fingers are curled like that. Now, now let's look at at what's happening in the y direction. Now they've. They've got a slightly different way of doing it here, uh, which I like actually, but I want to show you just to maintain this idea. Okay, this idea is now we're going to look at what's happening around the y axis. Uh, the and, Okay, so we cross out the j, we cross out the that row, and now we're left with these four rx, rz, fx, fz. And we go like this, R, X, F, Z, minus R, Z, F, X. So I know it's not like that here, but bear with me. R, X, F, Z, right? We do that, that kind of movement. Minus R, Z, F, X. And we multiply that by J. But, again, this is just the thing that you have to just memorize you have to put in a negative in front of this bracket. Okay? And you'll see that this, if you multiply the negative in, it's exactly the same as this. Okay? Okay, guys, so please, you're just going to have to learn it. Then, for the moment about the z-axis, you we cross that guy out, we cross that row out, and we're left with rxfy, 
uh, sorry, R, X, R, Y, F, X, F, Y. Again, we do this motion. We say, we say K, and we open the brackets, and we say R, X times F, Y, R, X times F, Y, minus R, Y times F, X, minus R, Y times F, X. And that is plus again. So the reason why uh, we do it like we just to, to remember this that it's a plus for the for the X uh, component and a minus for the for the Y and a plus for the K is so that we can just remember this motion okay that times that minus that times that okay so either way you, you can do it either way uh, this you'll have to, you'll have to memorize <clears throat> whereas this <clears throat> the only thing you have to memorize in the second way that I showed you is that you have to have this kind of motion, okay, and that you have to have a minus in front of the J component, the, the Y component, okay. So now, what do we have? We've got a moment about the X axis that has this magnitude, a moment about the Y axis that has that magnitude, and a moment about the, the K axis or the, the Z axis that has this magnitude, okay. And so here we have this again. We've got mx equal to this, which is that. We've got my equal to that. And we've got mz. So what does this mean? So ignore everything and just look at this dotted line f. Right, That is the actual force that, that is being applied to the body. And we want to now know, okay... What What is the moment of this force? What is the resultant moment of this force? Well, what we do is we break this guy up into Fx, Fy, and Fz. Fx, Fy, Fz. And now we look at how do these three forces contribute to moments about the X, Y, and Z axes? Okay? So what is what is this saying, this over here? What is this saying? Let's look here. So it's the moment about the x-axis. Okay. So there's the x-axis. You put your thumb in the direction of the x-axis and you curl your fingers around the, the axis. Now, what is the resultant moment, the, the magnitude about that axis? It is, first of all, uh, RYFZ. So here is FZ the component of, of f in the in the z direction and it is causing a moment first of all because it's not on the line of action of x right it is displaced a distance a perpendicular distance r y so the moment of f z about x is equal to r y times f z r y times f z and you can see if you curl your put your fingers in the direction of R and curl it towards the force, it causes a um, counterclockwise moment, and your thumb will be in the positive direction. That's why it's a positive. Now, the next one is F Y. There's F Y. You can see that it has this perpendicular distance to to the x axis there so the moment that fy causes about x is rz fy rz fy and put your fingers in the direction of R, rz and curl it towards fy and you'll see that it's got a clockwise rotation then that is why it's a minus now i'm not going to do all of these you can do them yourself but I just want to show you this fx. Why is fx not causing a moment about the x-axis? Because it's parallel to the x-axis. Remember, a force doesn't cause a moment about a, an axis that's parallel to that force, or it doesn't cause a moment about a, an axis that um, is on its line of action. Okay, So just make sure that you understand wh how do we calculate the magnitude of my and mz. Um, look at each force. So, for example, the let's look at M, let's look at the axis, the z axis, because it's easy to see here. 
Um, does fx cause a moment about the z-axis? Yes, because it's separated by this ry. So fx times ry, there's that component, and it's going to be, you're going to go from r from ry to, to fx, so it's got this kind of motion, and it is a negative rotation, that's why there's a negative there. And then what about fz? fz doesn't cause a moment about z, because it's parallel. But what about fy? Yes, fy is separated by this rx here. So we go R, rx in the direction of rx and we curl our fingers towards fy and we're going to have a, a counterclockwise rotation and our thumb will be pointing in the positive z direction and that is why you've got a plus here. So see if you can do my. See if you know how to also calculate my. Alright.